Hello everyone, hello and welcome to YouTube channel inside the Great Bear Foster. And today we are in the Boston Cemetery where famous people from the Revolutionary War are buried. Please like and subscribe and let's find the world famous John Hancock. Hancock, where are ya? Ooh, we're coming across one guy. So, let me show you around, and at the end, I'm gonna set, show you all some pictures of where they were buried. Uh, oh, he's over here, he's over here. John Hancock, he's over here. Oh, this right over here, all no so if you see something like this that means that there's two people buried in here or multiple buried burial let me show you guys let me show you there's like the highest score in salem that has those boxes of burial highest is 13 or 20. over here i can't cross the line so i'm going to show you guys 13 or 10 people are buried right here, or 6. It's the bodies of the remains. Uh, all sorts of theories. You want to get through? Uh, sure, sure. Uh, thank you. Um, so, some people have theorized. Well, we know that uh, Hancock House is all... Here is John Hancock. That's his face. He was not wanting to be part of the Revolutionary War. So... When the British knocked down on his door and said, by the order of the king, King George III, we're taking over your house, we'll be living in it, and they kicked out his family, and that's where he got involved. And he was the, the founder who, signed, who made the Declaration of Independence. Basically. Cool, right? All right. Let's find. All right. No, exactly. Let's get that Paul, Paul Revere. I want his autograph. His favorite band. Any of you guys know about Revolutionary War? Comment below. Are you asking? No, 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 no. I'm, I, I'm just, I'm just making a video. I'm just making a video. I got over 13k subscribers. Yeah. Where hey, you Paul? remember me? Yes, mom, I remember you. you might where, want to do some where, of the cool carvings. Where's Paul Revere? Oh, she's back there. So take pictures of this one first. Maybe a close up on the sideways on the face. All right, you got it. Let's get him. So, Mom, why don't we put the coins here again? Um, at this point, it's a sign of respect. But they mostly just put put the coins so that when you don't have to walk in the sticks of eternity to heaven, well, you, you can't walk in the sticks. The, the sticks, like right, the where we're, you can't walk on it. There's like things in it that will come out and get you. Right. And instead, you pay for. Pay the tally man, yeah. The pay, pay the tally man mm -hmm. to cross the river. Just like in Egypt, I don't know if you have to try to pay the person driving the boat. I don't think that you would have to drive the boat. But I think there's like mostly someone there for eternity to help you cross. I think death is there. So one thing I do like to point out though, is this monument is called this uh, monument monument. So it's actually a tiny little one right there. And just so how many people are we have no idea because we it's I, been I feel up. I feel like that there's ten. Ten or thirteen. Here. You want to dig up this body? Oh my god, we're gross. I want that. He's a skeleton now. <laughs> he he like zombie apocalypse happens. He comes out. I'll be like, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. And there you go. I'll 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 get All him right. in the head and send him back. As I said, in his day, he was known in Boston 
but it wasn't until after 1860, when Longfellow's poem was published, that he became an iconic symbol of the American Revolution. And it was after that that this was put here. Most people think Paul Revere is buried here. He is not. How dare you? Uh, He's... Where he is buried. What? Oh. So as I said, Revere died a very wealthy man, but he always kept a very humble working class mentality, not into big epitaphs. That little circle next to it, uh, you'll see that on a lot of the graves throughout the city. That means that person participated in the tea party. Oh. Ladies, we would not educate you, but we did let you throw tea in the heart. Now, the first time I came here, I was five years old. Do you think I cared about Paul Revere or John Pantano? No. Wow. You know what I cared about? What are we getting ice cream? Com compared to the small tombstone, this, this is where Paul Revere is buried? At, stop it at. And it kept me quiet for five years. Not here, so let's so slowly time. walk over. That, that, that's what I'm saying. Compared to the small one, I don't understand why they have two. Because they wanted a bigger one for someone who was so important. I know. I got it. So this is the Franklin stone for Benjamin Franklin. But he's not buried here. This goes to his mom and dad, who are very dear. Ben Franklin is buried in Philadelphia. Let's go behind the scene and see the tomb of the parents. Oh my god, it's, it's Squirrel, YouTuber Squirrel. So, here lies the buried body of Hannah Franklin wife. Here is the father, Samuel Franklin, died July the 24th, and they were both age 66. This is the tombstone for the parents of Frank, of Benjamin Franklin, even though he was never president. If you go to this tomb and you see Franklin on it, it's a trap. It's a trap. It's a giant trap. Again, it is a huge trap for tourists to come in and think that Franklin is buried on top because even though that Franklin was never part of president, um, he was a famous, famous, what, a famous guy. So we are going to go straight to Samuel Adams and right at this burial in the cemetery, there's 2,000 plots, but in reality, there's 5,000 people buried. So they need about 3,000 more spots. And in here, you're probably going to see tons of baby little sparrows. Sparrows! Hello! And the money right here, don't touch it. Because it's for the people to cross the other world to pay the person to cross Neverland to heaven. To cross the lake. Because you can't cross the water. All right. Here is. Ooh. Have you guys ever heard about the five people who were first massacred by the British troops? They are the first victims. March fifth, seventeen seventy. There were five people who were massacred. The first people massacred by the British. Here is where they're buried. There's literally six people here who are buried. Samuel Gray, Samuel something. The third person, James, was actually a black guy. And the Chris, Tack, and Patrick. Victims of the Boston Massacre, March 5th, 1770. So, all five of these guys, their remains, like their hands or fingers, they're literally buried in here. But the full body of Christopher Sniper, Snyder, he's buried in here. Okay, so these Thought I'd show you. Here is Samuel Adams. Samuel Adams signed the Declaration of Independence, governor of... Uh, a leader of men born in 1722 died 1803 he was the son of the revolution 
yes, he was buried here. But he was a popular guy, but he wasn't really that popular because he kept failing at everything. He was kind of like a misfit, just like us people and stuff. So I consider him to be the founder of the misfits, like me and mom. So at the end, all misfits do everything in our power to mark on their line of history. So if you're a misfit, you can do it. You can mark yourself on history, like what I'm doing. I'm trying to become the strongest YouTuber. Here is a crest, and I don't know the name. Can you guys come below and guess the name? J A L K S A R. Cool. Do you know that in here there are actually people who are buried inside the wall? Yeah, we saw that. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy isn't it? it's it's creepy in my opinion why not buried on the ground <laughs> i mean really don't i don't think anyone wants to be buried in the wall probably not probably, probably not those probably weren't very good windows for their food yeah <laughs> maybe, their maybe they took out the bodies and buried them in the wall <laughs> but buried them in the ground but i would still say that tons of these graves are falling apart and stuff people need to start fixing them yeah it's all part of history yeah, but fix them because we don't know the names yet. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so like here, you're probably going to coins here, and there are some people here who fifty-five something something died March eighth. 1753, age 55. So you're probably gonna see her here if you come to Boston to look at the cemetery. There's gonna be tons of babies and little kids who survive like say 24 hours or a day, a day and a half, two weeks or two years or a few years. You know like once where they're throwing like snowballs and stuff, snow with rocks and stuff and a person got out of his gun and shot a 12 year old and that 12 year old died about it okay guys well that's gonna be the end of the video please like and subscribe i'll see you on the next one have an amazing day and um come down to boston you will see tons of tombstones there are 5,000 people buried here and 12 and 2,000 marks you see these these are marks so when you die and put a tombstone on your name, the tombstone just fades away. So what are we doing for the rest of our lives and stuff? Only to re be remembered by this. Anyone have any idea? Life is a four letter word. It's hard, pain, and we don't know. We don't know. But again, you make a hard earned in life only to die and be remembered by looking like that. I don't understand. Or this one falling apart, like I lifted up my wood, would So, if you look over here, Do you guys know that over here has like 13 people remains who are buried inside? Oh, in this one? Yeah. And in the giant one. Like two stack of one in Probably. I can believe it. Or, sep or separate I, or... I can believe there's a lot of people stacked in here. Yeah. The highest one would be like in Salem for 13 or 20 people. Wow. That's how much. Like, I don't know. Maybe like a hand, an arm, an eye, something, a leg, a foot. Those are the remains of the people. So when a zombie apocalypse comes out, I have no idea how they're going to form together. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, but if it comes out, I'd be like, die, 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 right, die, right. go back inside. <laughs> Who wants to see that? <laughs> oh, that, that'd be kind of creepy. And funny. And funny. Mostly funny.
So it's completely carved away throughout history. Wow. Just wow. And do you all know that the names are in front of stuff? So why would it, a grave? Because they're all buried. The names are behind. So why would you enter through the, that way? All these knots and names, and the names are right here. Can someone explain that to me? <laughs> I have no idea. So, I hope you all enjoyed. Please like and subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. Have an amazing day. And bye bye. Peace. Oh. Come down to Boston. It's a fun place. So, okay, so tragic event. events. 300 years ago, you're not going to listen to this. 300 okay. years ago, this location did not have ideal conditions for a graveyard. There were many underground springs of water, okay, made it soggy and damp. Tomb owners routinely, routinely found their tombs filled with water, with caskets and bodies floating about. <laughs> Since the grass grew quickly... I don't believe this. Since the grass grew quickly, the Boston selectmen, always looking to turn a profit, rented this place okay. as pasture to grave digger James Williams with a provisio that he, the renter made good all damages which may happen to the graves by the reason of his cows going to there. By 1740s, grave diggers complained that the burial ground was so filled with dead bodies they were obliged oftentimes to bury them four deep. In 1794, the physicians warned of the health dangers from the crowded state of these grounds and the exhalation or gases which much frequently <laughs> arise from the opening of graves, as well as it is being almost impossible to dig new graves without disturbing the relics of the dead already in Okay, place. that's a zombie apocalypse for yeah. you. <laughs> it's the ocean apocalypse. So it wasn't solid enough. There were underground springs here, enough. and the, the people who were first buried here, their caskets would fill with water. Oh my God. And the, the grave diggers said that they would be floating all about. No. So when I told you that the, that the oh my God. grave stones don't, don't necessarily correspond to the people's names. So how many people there? are buried after the whole flood incident? I don't know, but I'm digging the early ones. The early, early ones, okay. So here um, is an event on the evening of July 3rd, 1728, a uh, young Harvard graduate, Benjamin Woodbridge and Henry Phillips uh, he, you know, he died at age 20. 20. Are you serious? Yeah. He Damn. quarreled. They had a fight at the Royal Exchange okay. Tavern. A challenge was given for a duel. A and duel. they adjourned to the Boston Common in back of us. Oh, my God. Woodbridge was stabbed by Phillips and died the next day. Henry Phillips' father was a leading bookseller and part of the French Huguenot community. So the father fled to France and died of grief within the year. Woodbridge oh. was buried at the Granary at the request of his father, Magistrate Dudley Woodbridge of Bur Barbados. So... Oh my god. And this is James Otis who was always buried here, William politician, writer, graduated from Harvard. Otis was an eloquent author and orator for the Patriots. John Adams described him as a, a flame of fire. Flame of fire. Vigorously I want to be a flame of fire. against the British writs of assistance, which were the ones that said if, if they want if they thought there was contraband in your house, they could come and turn your house upside down like a board. So how many did the homes did they go into? They gave him suspect of contraband, but they were patriots, so they just went in to disturb the house. It gave them the right to go into any house that they wanted, and they took advantage of it. Oh, jeez. So, um, in 1969, British official John Robinson hit, hit Otis over the head during another tavern fight. Oh, my God. And, Poor and Otis. Led, led, us to, led to the end of his career. He said, I hope when God shall take me out of time into eternity that it shall be with a flash of lightning. He wrote his sister, historian Mercy Otis Warren, as he wished, he died in Andover, Massachusetts in 1783 after being struck by lightning <laughs> that ain't a during a thunderstorm. He's buried with his wife, Ruth, an alleged Tory <laughs> in her family's tomb. Oh, my God. I feel so bad for Otis. Oh, my God, yeah. So, oh. so he's, he is definitely a son of liberty. Um, he, you know, he's he did everything all the other ones do. He's just not as well known. Um, and he, 1783, struck in the head. My lightning. Oh my god. Killed on the spot. It's the thing that he wished for. I feel so bad for Otis. 20. Wait, so it says 21 burial places. Tomb 21. Tomb 21. It's the burial oh, okay. place of All two right. colonial schoolmasters, teachers, John Tileston and Rufus Webb. He was the head of the North Riding School for 57 years, and she was the master of the South Riding School, which was girls only. Damn. 
and there's another Esther Martin, maybe Pickering, Mary, oh, Lovering, married Joseph Lovering of Roxbury and died at the age of 26. Two years older than you. Damn. Probably in Java. Okay. Samuel Black was a successful mariner and merchant, never married, his will directed his executors to free my Negro boy Lester and give him 400 pounds at the expiration of his term of apprenticeship and sell all his real estate. Okay, then. Okay. To the memory of Captain William Clackhorn of New Bedford, who died in a fit of apoplexy on his visit to this town, 1793, in the 60th year of his age, there yeah. lies in tone beneath the t turfed clod a man beloved, the noblest work of God, with friendly throbs and thine heart beats no more, close the gay scene, the pomp of life is over. Oh, right. Okay. So I thought this was hysterical. Do you want to take a picture of it so you'll remember? Or? It's a little bit hysterical. I mean, James Otis and, and these guys, and the whole thing about the floating in the graveyard. I Dickie! Just... <laughs> Where's Otis? I think if I read the sign right, he's right here. It's right over here. Yep. People walking right by, they have no clue. Oh gosh, Otis. James Otis! Oh my goodness! Yep. Here lies James Otis, uh, the patriot of the revolution, famous for getting struck by lightning. <laughs> James heard his argument against the writs of assistance. The writs of assistance was the Sorry, writs that me. allowed the British troops to enter any house that they wanted. Oh my god! Otis! Just, no one well, had a bad life. That's when John Hancock, who had been sympathetic to the British before that, they came to his house, they took his house, and he was like, I'm done with you. I'm done. You took my house. John, you don't mess with John Hancock. So I got away with it. took his house, then he got involved in the revolution. But James Otis is, is someone that did, you know, look, struck in the head by lightning when he died, but were same things. Does, that doesn't that remind you of a little small tale of, like, my ancestor, yeah. Tom, Thomas, they thought he was a witch and they told him to get out. He was like, fuck you, get out. So he grabs his... And he wouldn't go with them. My they went to collect Thomas him and take he, him away and he wouldn't go. Yeah, he literally grabbed his gun and said, get off my property, because they were going to take his property for them saying that reality. He's like, get the fuck off my property. <laughs> There's another duck tour. Oh no, the duck tour! There's dinosaur, robot, and butterflies. You can get a better... Yes. <laughs> Okay. So we'll ask you one last question. Um, why do you like to... I guess I should look at the camera. What's your name? Uh, Jimmy Cole. And can people find you online? Yeah, my website's jimmystangents.com. Okay. And yeah. why do you do what you do? Why are you I love sharing history, and I've always loved history, and thank you so much. Oh, I think it looks heavier. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. Greek mythology came across the it's kind, of, it's, it's kind of like the thing for Egypt and stuff. You have to pay the um, person to cross the river to heaven. Yeah. So everything has history, really. So uh, your short, shorts have what, history. What, what, <laughs> ev everything, yeah. what, what you do, so, everything's a motivation. But what I liked is I just came up with the idea, um, I, if you like to borrow a guy, you that um, sharing it was a lot better than trying to sell it. You know what I mean? And I just call it recycled history. And so, I don't know, it just kind of built from there. What mo what motivated you? Well, there used to only be really one sign in here 25 years ago. And I thought people wanted more and they wanted mobility with the map and stuff, so, yeah. Cool. That's awesome. Well, what is it about this cemetery? Well, I mean, admittedly, it's some of the most famous people that are here. And really, to be honest, my whole history, uh, I, you're welcome to borrow a guy, just return on your way. Um, my whole history odyssey started here with Sam Adams. And I got a book called Three Men of Boston. And Really, just started right there because history you always get one answer, you got two more questions. So, nice, yeah. but I'm really surprised when I saw like the Frank, the, the Franklin statue. Just return on your way. Yeah, I was really surprised when I saw the, the Franklin statue and realized that it's actually their parents That's and just buried in Philadelphia. Why does it's like a big statue? I That's even, even if it's like a big giant trap. To the That's right a replacement for the brick and mortar one he put on it that was a lot smaller. What happened to the original? It just was falling apart it was 75 years later after it had been put up. So so some fans of his paid Solomon Willard to design the Bunker Hill Monument to design that and build that. And nice. so it's really an ode to Ben just as much as his parents <laughs> and the DNA that they uh, shared. So, <laughs> I see. Well, thank you. Well, thank you. Wait, what is your name on? 
My name's Mira. Mira, what's your uh, YouTube? Uh, Mira Fastware XD. Can you? Uh, I, show I, me? I can write it down for you. Oh, no, just show me. Let's go on. And Sam? Sam. Oh, money meant nothing to him. He had no interest. I mean, he uh, he inherited some money and inherited. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you. And he inherited the brewery. It really was probably not a brewery. Yep. It was actually um, I. You're welcome to use a guide. Just return on your way out. Oh, okay. Yeah. It was, uh, now I'm going to forget the term, but it, are you all together with that? Uh, no, I'm sorry. If you like the bar guide, yeah. yeah, yeah sure. Sorry, enjoy. Yeah. Um, now I'm going to forget. He was a monster, so I. You're welcome to use a guide. Just return it when you come out. Okay. Yeah, sure. So they prepared the hops and yep. germinated it. So that's really what they did as far as I know. So Technically, he, he, he was, was mostly a like a monster and he cut. What's that? He was mostly a monster and he cut. What, what was it again? Monster. Monster. He, he malted the hops. Mold? It's in the process oh. of making it. Oh, oh, my oh okay. All right. Yeah. So, in fact, there's a Samuel Adams company that makes beer that has his picture. That, that has his picture from the 99 restaurant. I don't restaurant. think they usually work in the No, no. So, no. All right. Oh, no. Well, thank you very okay, much for giving you. us your time.